every year millions of people are exposed to radio nuclides used in medical procedures such as this one right here, Technetium-99. A friend of mine just recently got this. She was exposed to approximately 1.85 million decays per second of this stuff, at least when they first put it in. That's about uh, 50 millicuries. It's two injections. This is Cardiolite, a common Technetium-99 chemical. So anyway, I decided to uh, capture a spectrum of it to go on with my uh, uh, spectrum video series. As you can see, that count rate's so high, it's actually messing with my equipment. Um, but I started off with my Polymaster, which has a small 4 cubic centimeter cesium iodide detector. Uh, when she uh, approached the house, I was able to detect her. When she walked into the house, the um, units all started going crazy. Uh, as you can see, there's the primary photo peak at one, uh, 140 keV. There it is. A beautiful photo peak. It just blows everything else away. I took a larger detector and went at it. My uh, one inch sodium, sorry, 1.5 inch sodium iodide detector. Um, I didn't use my big uh, uh, UCS30. I used my smaller Gamma Spectacular because it's easier to carry around. And um, this is my first spectrum I got from that. And as you can see, this is in logarithmic view and it shows a lot of choppiness. But there's not really much going on in the spectrum except for the um, primary photo peak. Again, I narrowed that down a little bit. I used a linear view, and as you can see, still it's kind of not really where it should be. So notice how it shifted over to the left a little bit. I used water to actually block some of the lead X-ray fluorescence. And now here's the actual final cleaned up spectrum. As you can see, that's the primary photo peak. There was a second hump you saw a second ago, and I'll pull up the spectrum in a second and go into a little more detail as to what that actually is. But as you can see, it's very uniform spectrum. I started off with the small CRM100 which has a very small tube and here's what it sounds like uh, about three or four inches away from the person's face. After that I selected the inspector EXP Plus. Again pretty crazy sounding up close huh? Now it's the Ludlum's term with a, a one inch sodium iodide detector. This is a one inch sodium iodide detector and this is on times 1000 mode. So you're looking, um, as you can see, it's completely overloaded. When I hit the reset button, like now, it jumps right back up to hard over almost immediately. 500,000 counts per minute. All right, so here I am in the basement. Um, I am perhaps, there's a lot of crap in this basement, I am perhaps uh, 50 feet or 60 feet away from where the uh, person is sitting and I'm in the basement. So not only am I below them, but I'm also far away from them. And we're hard over on my Ludlum on the times 10 mode, which is normally around 2,000 counts per minute and I'm way over that. Switch to 100 times and let's drop down and see where we go. So it's times 100, so instead of 2,000 we're now down to about Looks like about 10,000, 8,000, say about 9,000 counts per minute. And this area should be about three. So I'm going to kind of hold this like this so that you can see it. And I'm going to walk this detector over and see if I can figure out where she is in the house from the basement itself. Down. I don't want to show you everything. The basement's full of stuff. So um, we must be on the right track because we're maxed out. All right, so let's put the detector down on the floor and switch to the times to the times 1000 mode. And the detector drops again. I'm going to take this detector piece, stick it on the detector like this. It'll look stupid, but it'll allow you to see the screen. Okay, so let's continue walking through our very cluttered basement, trying to figure out where she is. Okay, it's going down now, so let's turn around and let's walk back. It's going up. So wherever she is, she's over this way somewhere. I know exactly where she is. Let's see. Getting over here towards the corner. If I go this way, it's 
going up. If I come back and go this way, it's going down. So that means she must be somewhere over here. And as we put it up towards the ceiling, we go nearly hard over. And in fact, if we move it over a little bit, it goes down. Move it over here, it goes up. She must be right there. Right there. How do I know? Because I'm holding the detector up towards the ceiling and picking her up without any problem. Wow. The entire house is completely flooded. We are in 1000 mode, so we're looking at, we were looking at almost 400,000 counts per minute. And let's cut the sound off. And move over here for a second and grab my inspector. Put the inspector down, cut its sound on. Let me get the inspector in my hand. The only problem with the EXP mode, it's great for me holding it with one hand showing myself, but it's not good for me showing you. And as you can see, we can detect her readily right through the ceiling without any problems. Now here's an interesting question. If I go the farthest possible way, the farthest possible way away from um, from where she's sitting, what will the readings look like? Okay, I'm as far away as I can get. I'm over here in the corner of the house. See, the corner of the house. And if you look, all the way back over there is where I was. Look how far away. This house is like massive. I am 60 plus feet away at least, maybe more from where she is. She's up there, 60 something feet away. Now, looking through all of this, let's see where we are. The ins I have the inspector probes and everything kind of pointed in the direction she was in, so you can call that cheating if you like. Let me try to put this guy up here. Ah, there. So, it's hard, hard to do everything one-handed. So I have the probes pointing in the right direction, so I'm, I'm a cheater. But All right, so look at the probe here. Once I've gotten all the way across the um, house completely, the inspector is now down to normal. Statistically, if I were to run this, det this uh, uh, detector for maybe an hour or two, I would probably pick up a slight increase, but it's definitely down to normal. It's around 34 counts per minute, it's normal, so it's going up and down. Let's look at the um, Ludlum. This is much more gamma sensitive. It's getting its normal background, probably. We're in times 1000, so we're on the 100 to 500,000 scale. Let's go to times 100. Go to times 10. Now we're down to where we should be. Should be around 2000 counts per minute. Maybe a little elevated, probably not. And so, eh, maybe a little elevated, I guess. My point is, is from across the house, it finally disappears. So, let's, um, yeah, everything one-handed, let me tell you, is terribly difficult to do. So let's take this now and start walking and back and see what happens. See how fast we max out. All right, we only walked a little bit of a distance. And we're already maxed out in the times 10. What does that tell you? Far away? Already maxed on the times 10. We step back. And it starts to go down a little bit. So the gradient quite literally falls off here. Remember distance inverse square. Quite impressive. Now that's stupid. Just this little tiny bit and it starts to increase. Did I maybe bump into something else radioactive over here? It doesn't feel like that 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 did, that progression didn't feel right. But I have searched this whole basement in detail. Now it's going back up again. So I guess that is correct. So let's switch now to the last but not least the times one thousand mode one more time. Times one thousand, so we're settling back down again. And let's walk back. Alrighty. God, there's so much stuff up in here. We are about half distance. It's hard to walk around in here because of all the stuff. We're down to one quarter, or three quarters of the distance, rather. It's only one quarter to go. And as we approach the area, it goes right back up again, following distance inverse square perfectly. And there you have it.
As you can see here, my friend was injected by about 1.85 billion uh, becquerels. So that's, uh, to give you an idea, that's uh, 1.85 million decay, uh, billion decays per second. Uh, the reality is she was injected by two, I, I'm assuming these are approximately 925 million decay per second apiece, or uh, um, uh, if you like, one uh, that would be 9.25 times 10 to the 8th uh, becquerel injections. These are given to me in, in millicuries, which are 25 millicuries apiece. And I don't know why we use millicuries, I guess because the United States is backwards and doesn't know how to use SI units for some reason. Um, ironically, she wasn't actually told by her doctor what it was. She wasn't given any information whatsoever on what to do. Um, the typical things that doctors do. Apparently, they just think that we're dumb. That must be why that they, they don't tell us anything at all. But that's okay. But it comes out to about 50 millicuries. So that's actually 1.85 times uh, 10 to the ninth becquerels just to give you an idea. Now Tech TCM99 has a half-life of 6.01 hours, so after about 70 hours or so, plus or minus, she'll be basically free of it. Uh, the technetium that's in her, however, has a half-life of 211, uh, 211,000 years, plus or minus. It's actually 211, 100, so yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> that luckily will be peed out because it's going to be otherwise a long time before it disappears. Um, her dose rate at contact was 157.2 microsieverts per hour and this was about two or three hours after the uh, treatment was performed so it actually had dropped down a little bit uh, the maximum reading I got off of her was actually well my ludlum exceeded 500,000 counts per minute but my um, polymaster was able to get 6,500 counts per second. And let me just quickly see what I, that comes out to. 6,500 times 60. So it got 390,000 counts per minute. So I'm thinking that so far my highest uh, reading was from the Ludlum, which exceeded 500,000. And it looked like it was going pretty strong when it got there. So it probably went far past that. But uh, very interesting. As you can see here, we have a peak that's generated from the 140 kV gamma rays from the technetium-99 and the x-rays from the lead fluorescence, well the x-ray fluorescence from the lead around 75 to 80 kV and the two mixed together to produce this kind of big clumpy peak right here made from both. Uh, this can't be separated with a crystal detector, it's just two squished together. If we had a high purity germanium detector, this would not be a problem. We could see both easily, but not with a crystal detector. What I did was I calculated that um, water would do the best job of shielding such that I could get the technetium-99 gammas while reflecting back, if you like, or actually attenuating most of the uh, x-rays from the lead. So this is what it looks like after I put the water in place. And you see it shifted. Let's go back and then let's go forward once more. As you can see, there's still some lead x-rays coming through here, but the shift is much better now, much towards where it's supposed to be. And this Gaussian correlation peak here shows that we're pretty much right on the money for technetium-99. So good job there. That looks pretty good. Um, I use this to make my final picture, as you can see. Uh, the reality is that this is, needs to be doubled right here, this um, activity of course, but that's all right. I, I'll, I'll fix that up later. Um, the 140.51 keV peak is shown clearly via isomeric transition, and this was done with a uh, sodium iodide detector of 1.5 inches uh, that's 38.1 millimeters. And this is the same detector I use with my UCS30, but I used it today with a Gamma Spectacular because I couldn't lug the UCS30 upstairs. To, to work on this, it was just too much trouble, and I ended up just using the laptop connected to the Gamma Spectacular. So, uh, different tools for different jobs. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye. Um, oh, and let me leave you with what the sounds of the Technetium-99 are. Remember, the low-pitch sounds that you hear are low energy photons and the high are high energy photons. So here's what it actually sounds like when the spectrum is converted to sound. Enjoy.